guys, so today I wanted to talk about a bit of a sensitive issue in Korea. Uh, it's been on the news a lot lately these days. So long story short, basically the Korean government and the Japanese government negotiated where the Japanese government would give compensation for the comfort women issue in exchange for the Korean government to shut up about it um, in the future. Basically, that's just what happened. Uh, why this became a problem is because the actual victims, the actual comfort women, never had a say in the in these negotiations, um, and they were furious that the Korean government decided to just negotiate in exchange for some money from the Japanese government. Uh, basically, these comfort women don't want money. These ladies are very, very, very old. Uh, they don't need money. What they are asking for is the Japanese government, well the current Abe Japanese government, to give sincere apology um, in representation of the Japanese government for what they did during World War II, uh, especially during the colonization of South Korea. Um, well basically the colonization of Korea and what they did to these women. Um, that's basically it. That's They just want an apology. They don't need money. But the Korean government decided to say, oh, okay, give us money in exchange for us shutting, about, um, shutting up about talking about comfort women in the future. So this has been a really big issue and the public is also very unhappy about it, saying, you know, what is the Korean government doing? This has become a political issue between the Korean government and the Japanese government, but it shouldn't be a pol political issue. It's actually a human rights issue. It's a human mass trafficking issue. What is comfort women? Well, the thing is, Korea was colonized between 1905 to 1945 by the Japanese, and this was during World War War and then War. World War One and World War Two, where Japan was doing the same thing Germany was doing in Europe, where Japan was trying to uh, become an empire and expand their empire throughout the whole Asia and Pacific. So uh, they tried to annex Korea, uh, they tried to conquer parts of China, Philippines, um, so like Southeast Asian countries as well. So this was like a mass empire expanding moment, and what? they feared was that the Japanese soldiers would maybe like create a rampage or go crazy if they didn't get sex. So what they decided to do is maybe initially they thought maybe we can bring prostitutes to um, solve this problem. But later on they had a shortage of supply of prostitutes. So basically they recruited, recruited local women from not only just Korea but Indonesia, um, China, a lot of the Southeast Asian countries that were being colonized or were countries that were targeted to be colonized to fill up these sex camps for their Japanese soldiers. So these young girls who were like 15, um, 16 or even younger than that, they were coerced by Japanese people or even local people who were very bad people who had links to the Japanese government and they were recruited saying that you'll be just working in a factory for your very poor family and um, you know you just need to work really hard for two years and you will bring wealth to your family. So these girls thought that they would be doing something nice for their family, that they'll be making money um, for their family. Little they Little did they know that this was actually sex trafficking. So they didn't. They thought they were going to factories, um, but where they ended up was they ended up in sex camps, comfort camps, all over Asia and Pacific to service these Japanese soldiers. And actual accounts of these ladies later on when they were. Uh, saying their, when they were recounting their stories from World War II was that they had to service up to 50 guys a day, 50 soldiers a day. Like, imagine, they were being raped more than 50 times a day. And 
if they were discovered to have STDs or even pregnant, um, they were either shot alive or burnt alive. The numbers of these comfort women have been deba debated. Uh, for example, Japanese historians say, oh, there were only like 20,000 people. That's still a lot, by the way. But some Chinese historians also say there might have been as much as 300,000 people. 300,000 girls abducted from their homes, tricked into thinking they'll be working in factories um, and then end up getting raped every day. Uh, to come back to the story, there was a recent negotiation by the Korean and Japanese governments. Um, the thing is, this isn't a political issue at all. It is a human rights issue. Uh, this is always what happens in a war. War is never a win-win situation. Um, everybody loses in a war. Somebody gets hurt. Everybody gets hurt. And the sad thing is, you know, maybe those sons in Japan, they never thought, they never probably wanted to be recruited for the war when they were, when the Japan Japanese imperialist government decided to expand their territory. Um, you know, the Japanese people never expected the Hiroshima bombs to hit them. Like, in the war, all these poor people died. Not just, you know, Korean people, Japanese people. And you know, the one who survives are the people who created the wars. And the people who are actually, who has to take responsibility or consequences of these wars are actually people who never had a voice or say in the creation of these wars. What these old ladies want is just an official apology from the Abe government because the Abe current Japanese government is not saying uh, that, is sort of denying that this ever happened. And I think it's very important for our kids to know history, um, for our future generations to know what happened in wars, to prevent it in the future. So all I'm asking you is, it's not like, please do something now, uh, let's do something about this issue now. It's so that maybe if we know our history correctly, and if we know that all these women were victims of the war, then we can tell our daughters and sons and people who are close around us to make our moral values and stick to them. To know that it's never right to use women as tools for sexual frustration. Um, to know that always women and kids are always more sacrificed in a war to know that war is never good basically all i want to say is we should acknowledge the fact that this happened to all these poor young ladies across asia and pacific um, due to japanese imperialism so there are talks these days recently about removing a, a comfort women girl statue that's in front of the Japanese Embassy in Seoul the statue is a symbol of the torment that the comfort women had to go through but there were talks about removing it um, in cooperation with the Japanese government and the Korean government um, many people are against this because it's like we're trying to remove what happened in history uh, we're trying to not tell our future generations that a war ever happened and there were so many sacrifices made in the war um, I think keeping this symbol is very important so we can tell our future generations um, and Japan can tell its future generations too look, what we did was bad um, the Japanese government can just say look what we did was bad. We really apologize for all the crazy traumatizing things that happened, all the killings, all the, you know, colonizing and such things like that. And then the future generation can learn from it and decide, okay, war is bad. You know, we should never create a war in the future. That's basically it. That's what people want to hear from the Japanese government.
nobody talks about removing all those, you know, signs and symbols of the Jewish Holocaust during World War II by Hitler, uh, by Germany. So why should we be even talking about removing this just one statue of a little girl that symbolizes what happened during the Japanese colonization and the Japanese expansionist uh, regime in Asia and Pacific because I think this is a very clear message and a strong one saying that war is never good. So I know this video is a little bit on the heavy side but I hope this has been a little bit uh, helpful in any way. Um, I've added some links down below that you can watch. Uh, it's just like some little animation and with the real accounts of the women who were actually recruited for these comfort camps. And so please check out the link below. Uh, there are some links on what other people, uh, journalists and professors have written about this issue, not only the Korean society but as the world as a whole. So there is a demonstration still happening, a rally that is happening every Wednesday since 1992. It's the longest running rally where uh, actual victims of comfort women, although many of them have passed away, still the survivors, plus a lot of the people are rallying in front of the Japanese embassy in Seoul uh, saying that they should claim clarity of history, they should claim the facts and the truth about the history of the war that Japan created. So this is still going on um, and the comfort women victims are asking for the realization of their rights, uh, not money. So I hope I can go there uh, someday on a Wednesday uh, and actually like talk with the uh, victims if I can and just maybe show you guys what the rally looks like and what is one of the hottest issues in Korea right now. Anyway, so if you see this kind of like sex trafficking or human rights issues happening around the world, um, I think we should know that, you know, victims are always victims and there's never a reason or an excuse why they shouldn't be victims. Um, so we know this is happening around the world again these days and I think just having some kind of awareness uh, would be really cool just so that although we might not be directly related to it that our moral values and our thoughts can still impact those around us and create a better future for us all okay I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you guys for watching this. Bye!